Hello, and welcome to Guidance for Better Life. Today, my guest is Michelle Ruslin, and he, she has an amazing story how God helped her see her real grandmother and other, other people deep down to souls, beyond their rough edges and some of their ups and downs. God showed her the real, her real self and how other people deep down as soul are a little different sometimes than they are walking around town. The bottom line is, even though she was a beautiful person, she's much more compassionate and tolerant of not only her grandmother, but every other soul she meets. So I think you'll find today's story and her experience very stunning. So thanks. I hope you keep watching. Hi. Hi, Del. Hi. That was a long intro. <laughs> um, your your uh, story is healing. It's more than healing your grandma. Healing with my grandmother. Yes. And it's in book three. I don't know the chapter. I think it's chapter 24. Chapter 24. This is a really neat story. It's a profound story where you were bathed and basically showered in God's light. So let's start from the beginning. You were up here at the school, the Nature Awareness School here in Virginia. I think it was one evening we started doing a Hugh thing, a guided contemplation. Yes. And what was different about this Hugh? We hewed for a while. And then you were having an experience, right? right? And then somebody else came along. Yes. So I don't remember all the details. You probably remember it. But you were bathed in God's light and cleansed. Right. What's that like? <laughs> it's one of those experiences that when you're in it, you soak up as much as you can. And then afterwards, it, you feel different, but you can't really put your finger on yeah, yeah. what's different. And explain the light. Literally, you were in the Holy Spirit. It comes in different colors. Right. It, you had all different colors going through you, and you said you were being healed or cleansed. Yes. It was like a spiritual shower, like God was pouring his light and sound, his Holy Spirit, and it sh you saw it as different, perceived as different colors right. with your spiritual eye, not your physical eye. What were some of the colors? I saw pink and blue and orange predominantly, and okay. I focused mostly on the pink. Um, that's what caught my attention the most. And pink is uh, as we learn up here at the school, that often, not always, but often is emotional type healing. Right. Did you feel, why did you feel you were having an emotional healing? At the, in the, some type of emotions. In the experience, I knew it was some sort of emotional healing just because the pink caught my attention. Okay, because of the pink color. Right, but I didn't know what the emotions were until later when the experience unraveled more. Okay, I didn't understand that in your story. So there's pink, blue, blue, and orange. Orange, okay. So literally, it's like like you were in a shower with light coming right. down, but it's not like light in the studio. It just it's just here. Yeah. It was God's light, which you've experienced over the years up here at the school, and there's more to it than just light. Right. It's not like a pink flashlight or something. Did you perceive some type of? You didn't know specifically, but you felt. You were, you were getting some type of cleansing or healing. Yes. And something to do with emotion. Right. The, it was almost like I was in a car wash, not to cheapen the experience at all, but okay. it was just so much light from different directions. Instead of like in a shower, it would just come from one, but okay. it was kind it felt like it was all around me. Well, I haven't gone through a car wash in a while <laughs> in a car, but you, we used to go through, my wife and I used to take a little car through and it hits, the water and the brushes would hit you from all right. different angles. So it's more cleansing than maybe just a shower. Right. Every little nook and cranny was bathed in God's light yeah. and love. And in that light, that light can heal, can uplift, it can do anything. I mean, it's God's light, right. of course. So partway okay. through the experience, I remember guiding the experience. I said, if you wanted, and I just followed what I was getting, I didn't make this up, but that was the, the clue I've got from the divine that you could have somebody else to share with you. Right. I think your story is more clear. I don't remember that far back. And who showed up in the shower, the spiritual shower car wash? I saw my grandmother who's still alive in this lifetime. Um, I didn't think to invite her. I just, she was just there all of a sudden. And then once I saw her, the pink light made sense okay. with the emotional healing. So you didn't ask her to come. It was no. like the divine wanted you to have an experience with your grandmother. Right. Okay. And now the pink light. Uh, since she's still alive, we want to be. 
gentle. <laughs> but you love your grandmother, but she right. has some rough edges. Yes. I think you use the word prickly. Yes. Prickly at times. Uh, I've been called prickly sometimes. But you love her, but there was like a wedge between really freely loving her and expressing right. it. What what was going on there? Um, when we're around her, she um, she has a lot of triggers and buttons that are very easy to press. So okay. a lot of times when we're with her, we're trying not to press those buttons. And kind of walking on eggshells? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So sometimes you're too busy walking on eggshells to give her love or kind of see through what is going on and okay. and you're focused more on the I egg like shells. that. Too busy walking eggshells to really enjoy being with her right. and sharing love and, and things with her. Right. So do you think the divine knew there was a problem there and wanted to help you with it? Yes. Okay, so yeah. it's something to do with your grandmother. Right. And then it spreads way beyond just your grandmother, this lesson, beautiful lesson you're given. So she's in that shower of light and what did you see? So she came into the shower of light with me, and then the light changed from being multiple colors to um, being gold, white light, and it was around both of us. So it wasn't just me anymore. It was around now, what's the difference between pink and orange and blue? Some of those light colors, and then gold and white. Did you? Is there a difference to you? For me, gold light is God's love. So God was giving both of us okay. love. So gold and white is, that's a very high level blessing. Right. And that was wrapped around both of you. Yes. Like a hug. Yeah. You, your grandma, and God. <laughs> so I think the pink light cleaned out whatever needs to be cleaned out between the two of us, and then God's light filled in Okay. after that. Was your grandmother in the pink light, or was that just you? That was just me. So I wonder, and it's not in the book. I'm asking now, it's a surprise question. Um, do you feel in hindsight, after you've written the story and had the experience, that you needed to be maybe oh, maybe more receptive to a healing with your grandmother? I, I wonder why you needed a healing before being with the grandmother. And we're just guessing, right. we're speculating. But have you had time to think about why you needed that before, or why God chose to give you that experience before seeing your grandmother? Going back and looking at it, and then also looking at the orange light, which is past lives, um, I know a past life I've had with her, and I think there oh. was probably some baggage that's between us now, okay. and I think it helped clear up some of that. Yeah, that's. I don't think that was in your story. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So the different planes of heaven up to the 12th heaven, the abode of God, generally have different colors of light. Pink is generally emotional mm -hmm. healing, the first heaven. And then orange is more causal, and that's where some past life memories right. are. So I didn't, I didn't realize that. So you might have had some prickly things that were left over from a former life, and then also your experience in this life. Right. So now you're in, in the gold and the white. That sounds very loving and yes. beautiful at that point. Um, how did you observe her? It's different than normal, right? Right. It wasn't the same prickly grandma. So then she looked younger than she does now in okay. the physical she also she seemed to have a childlike quality to her where she was happy and joyful and that's different than usual yes okay um and she just looked different and i think i was able to see her more as who she truly is instead of what i see on the surface when we visit and that's a real gift to see through that outer shell or right. crust or whatever did you feel different about your grandmother right while you're still in that situation? Did did your feelings soften towards her? Not quite. Um, in the moment, I was happy for her that she got to experience it, okay. and I knew that as soul, she felt different than she does when we see her here. Okay, so you're more happy for her, yes. her experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, later on in the story, which we get to, uh, how do you normally see your grandmother? You said prickly and all that. Was it was it almost like night and day from the way you know your grandmother? You love her, but there's that right. rough edge. Was it almost like two different people sitting there in the shower? Or 
Yes. How would the audience know the difference? Was it dramatic or a little different? It was definitely dramatic. We see part of the happy, joyous person when we see her, but it's definitely overshadowed by everything else. Okay. And so in this experience, pretty much everything else was gone, and what was left was... All the all eternal, the, the real her, the right. deep down, that's soul. That so she's actually a pretty beautiful person. Yeah. She's happy, childlike, wonderful. And then, then the next was the next day we had it. We were mm -hmm. sharing in class. Yes. And I don't know if I brought it up or you brought it up, but somehow the conversation shifted to what her life is like. Right. And maybe we're looking to see why she's she's sometimes prickly or on edge or whatever. And what were some of the things we came up with? And, and all of a sudden, I think we saw why why uh, she, she might feel the way she does. In other words, you don't have to agree, but you can understand right. why she is the way she is. And that, that's where you say in your story, you had more compassion mm -hmm. for her, even if she didn't change, and more tolerance, because you understood why. Right. What were some of the reasons she tends to be a little grumpy? So she's been married twice, and she For lost both husbands to cancer. And wow. so I think you pointed out that, you know, there's a lot of different emotions that go with that. And she sees that she was blessed to not only meet one husband, but to get two. And you say in your story, she misses them both. Right. And so now, she, instead of just missing one, she does miss both of them, and she's lonely. Mm -hmm. And I think on some level, she also feels, I don't know if abandon's the right word or, or what, but I think she kind of feels like other people are going to leave her too. I can't imagine losing my wife that I'm very much in love with after 28 years, but to have two loves. Right. And you're very clear in the story. They was, she didn't marry somebody else just on a rebound. She truly loved both of these men. Right. And she lost them both, probably through a difficult process. Mm -hmm. Uh, usually cancer can be difficult and over a period of time. Did they, is that where you felt more compassion for her? I see yes. it's emotional now. Do you feel for her now different than judging her? It's understandable you judged her a bit as a kid, but it seems like even now, even looking at you, you seem emotional. Right. Do, you, do you feel something beyond just the rough edges now for your grandmother? I do. Um, one of those past lives was also, I think I was married to her in this lifetime. Okay. Um, and so just, there's always been some emotions there for me with that and the cancer and stuff. And I think that was some of my emotional healing as well as from the past life. From the past also. life with her. Yeah. When you and, visit her now, is she still pretty much like she was while you grew up or is she softened from that experience or is she about the same? I think she's about the same, but we're able to treat her differently or I'm able to treat her differently. Most of the time, sometimes the time. <laughs> it's not always easy, but seeing, just remembering that there's something else there and yeah. that to have compassion for, you know, maybe she's not necessarily angry at us, but she's she got to be hurting. That. Yeah. How old is she now, approximately? Um, 88 or 89. 88, and yeah. she's spending this, all this time in her life alone, right. basically. So it sounds like. I keep mentioning the two things you mentioned in your story about you have more compassion right. uh, and more tolerance. In other words, because you kind of know her story a bit. Mm -hmm. And then you get into stories about after that, it wasn't just your grandmother. You had like an insight or more tolerant, more open, uh, more compassionate for everybody. Right. What were some of the other folks that all through your story, you had a long list that because you see behind the curtain for your grandmother, it's almost like you know other people that might be grumpy or irritable. They may have some things that, difficult situations. What were, I think it's coworkers. Mm -hmm. So coworkers, um, I'm on the phone a lot at work, sometimes dealing with people on the phone who, they're not always friendly. Yes. Um, and knowing that it's, I always knew it wasn't necessarily me, but just having more compassion, knowing that maybe they have something seriously stressing them out in their lives or yeah. they've had an experience like my grandmother. You never really know what people the are going through. Financial problems, marriage problems, health issues, all kinds of things that maybe that's why they're acting that way. Right. So do you feel more, I guess, compassion? I keep using that word because it's such a beautiful word. Compassionate and tolerant and tend to give people um, a bit of a break if they're grumpy. Mm -hmm. I like you don't take it personal either. Right. Like your grandmother is somewhat prickly, not because of you, it sounds like. Is that what you concluded? Right. 
because she's had a tough life in many ways and a lot of loss and hurt and pain. Right. And she's lonely. So can you, uh, it's not in the book, but you're married now. Right. Can you imagine, you don't even want to think about no. it. What if you lost somebody you love and you fell in love again and lost them? Right. And then your last 20, 30 years of your life, you're alone? That, man, he can see why somebody's a little grumpy. Definitely. <laughs> we love you, Grandma. <laughs> I don't know if she watches, but and Michelle loves you very much. <laughs> so is there anything else you'd like to share? One thing I noticed from this experience is I was also being judgmental of how she was acting. Huh. And through the experience, it's helped me to stop judging her, which not only helps me treat her differently, but it's not good for us when we're... Yeah. judgmental of people yeah we're better off if we take a right. higher road and and go back to being compassionate tolerant even if we don't know why people are having a rough day right uh, and maybe we'll have a, a break from somebody when we're having a rough day because you know we all can have those days right. that's really interesting people on the phone that may be grumpy maybe they're stressed over something maybe a child is sick maybe they just lost their job whatever and you're able to be more loving, more compassionate on the phone? Mm -hmm. Yes. It sounds like you're able to walk the golden rule. Basically treat people with the respect that you'd like to be treated with. Right. It's also like the second commandment, love your neighbor. So it sounds like you're actually able to do that genuinely now. Yes. Now some some gifts from the from God are really strong, but they wear out over time. <laughs> are you still uh, as compassionate with your and understanding with your grandmother now and other people on the phone. And I'm not trying to put you in the corner here, <laughs> but it's just the question just popped in my mind. Or do you need a, a, a reboot, some more pink light? <laughs> it definitely ha was much stronger right after it happened, and it caught my attention a lot. And then okay. I think since then, I'm not always aware of this person's being mean. Maybe this is going on, but I think more naturally, I just haven't let it bother me or let it upset me the way I might have in the past. Maybe this interview will reboot it. <laughs> yeah. Because we, our memory, other things come up in your life. You tend to, things to get stale or kind of way back in your mind and not right up front. Do you right. see your grandmother very often? A couple times a year. Okay. So, yeah. very cool. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks. And I hope this story helps in some way, shape, or form. A lot of people out there are on edge, grumpy. They've got financial problems or health issues or maybe their marriage is starting to have problems or the kids are upset or somebody at work giving them a hard time. We don't know. And like Michelle's story, she didn't know what was bothering her grandmother and why she the way she is until we realized she'd had two serious losses to her life, both husbands she loved very much, according to Michelle, died of cancer. That had to be a tough experience. So maybe Michelle's story will help you and me and all of us not judge so much and try to treat people with respect, love our neighbor a little bit, even if we don't understand why they're being so prickly. So if you can relate to this, somebody in your life that seems hard to get along with and you tend to walk on eggshells, I think a lot of people can relate with that. Maybe this story will just give you a moment to pause and think, Wow, I never wondered why they're so grumpy or prickly or hard to get along with, whatever. And maybe that'll heal the relationship at least a little bit. So I hope the show blessed you today and helps you in some way in your own life. Thank you very much for watching.